Hey guys, it's Jen and welcome back to my channel. Today I am reporting live from Montana. Good morning from Montana. Touchy. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. On today's edition of Vlogmas, I am going to do a very highly requested video. It's should I get an MBA? Or why should I get an MBA? Or is it necessary to get an MBA? Get all variations of that question. I'm a little under the weather, but it's Vlogmas, so I am gonna do my best. I haven't seen any of my other videos. I am at UC Berkeley and I am earning my MBA and I'm graduating in 2019. So that's why I'm like semi-qualified for this video. <laughs> Number one thing that you learn in any MBA course is when a professor asks a question, you know, should like, should you get an MBA? The answer is always, it depends, right? Because there's no binary choice or right decision. It really depends on the person and the background and the goals, things like that. So. Largely what I'm going to tell you is it depends. It's obviously a personal choice. There are some industries that I'll talk about that are more, that is more necessary to have an MBA. And then there are ones that it might behoove you to have an MBA. So I'm going to chat through those. Let's just hop into it. So if you want to be an investment banker, I would highly recommend earning an MBA. Not only is it pretty much required after a certain amount of years in investment banking and expected. It also helps you to curate the skills that you need to be an investment banker, both like finance for your technicals. Um, so anytime you go out for like a summer associate position, you're going to have to do technical interviews as well as behavioral interviews. And if you don't have a finance background, and even if you do, even my friends that have an undergrad in finance, still are really gonna need the brush up and the on-campus recruitment and the career management group. They have a lot of resources for people who are interested in investment banking. They have um, like, you know, books and questions to be prepared for. There's also something called like core seats. So if you're a core school for San Francisco, Berkeley's core for all, all of like the major top bulge bracket banks, um, like JP Morgan for instance, those, have protected core seats so you're guaranteed that out of the berkeley school you'll have let's say like six seats five seats four seats whatever it is and that is much easier to get a job than trying to go on your lonesome in a non-protected way i mean maybe you could go off cycle but if you're not in a top 10 school and even for berkeley berkeley is not necessarily core for new york but we're core for the big banks in san francisco Whereas like NYU and Columbia, I believe can be core. Booth is almost always core uh, for finance. So it really depends. I would do a little bit of research there, but if you're going into an interview with a protected seat, that's a much better situation than if you're going with basically zero to one seats for non-course uh, schools. So if you're an investment banker or you want to be an investment banker, I would highly recommend an MBA, but not just any MBA you really want the best that you can get into. Booth is obviously the, one of the best for finance. Um, in New York, Columbia and NYU, they do get a lot of, because of their location, they're connected. Um, Berkeley obviously is great if you wanna work in San Francisco. And I figured like for this video, it'd just be easier to go by like career choice. And that just made the most sense to me because there's a lot of, <laughs> There's a lot of like variation in, as to like whether or not this would make sense. So for investment banking, your grades do matter. Even if you're at a non-disclosure school like Berkeley, we don't disclose our grades, but you can opt to disclose your grades or something like that. And if you don't, people figure you don't have a good GPA. I don't know, I can do like a whole nother thing on that. I'm not in the investment banking track, but a lot of my friends are. So I know quite a bit about it, but just keep in mind that you wanna keep your grades as high as possible. For management consulting, same thing as investment banking. Yes, you're probably going to want an MBA. They do on-campus recruitment. Everything that I just said about investment banking is pretty much true for consulting, management consulting. It helps to come from a top school, obviously. There's on-campus recruitment. The career management group can help you go through the recruitment process. So for bankers, for instance, they 
do the recruitment process on campus typically throughout the fall and then you're placed for your summer position which is between your first and second year and then you are offered a full-time job which would start following your graduation date that's pretty much how it works so when i'm talking about on-campus recruitment things like that that's what i'm talking about so for management consulting, highly recommend, obviously grades matter, your school matters. Those are two industries that are very like persnickety in that sense. And if you wanna do either of those things, it's gonna be much easier for you if you're coming from a top 10 MBA. For the pivoters, let's say you've been doing one thing your whole life, you wanna do something else. I think an MBA can really, really help you because it gives you kind of let's say you wanted to go from management consulting to banking or you wanted to go from marketing to finance whatever the case might be those are huge jumps and the way that you have to do that in the real world is just start from ground zero probably get like an internship so you might go from making like 100k to like zero dollars and work your way up the ladder that's pretty much how you unless you know somebody or something's worked out well or maybe you have some transferable skills and somebody sees that, okay, maybe you can transfer without going to the very, very bottom, but either way, you're gonna take a step down and you're going to be spending maybe three years trying to get back to the same level that you were in your previous sector career. So coming, if you're a pivoter, an MBA can help you a lot because you don't necessarily have to start from the bottom up. You can say, you know, I've taken these 10 finance courses, for instance, I'm really interested in corporate finance, um, you know this is how I did on the GMAT this is the school that I'm at and you'll probably be able to start at like a much higher position people it's all a PR game right this third-party endorsement from a great school people just figure you're smart and you can work your way through a higher position in a different segment and be all right right and you've had some training in your core classes or whatnot um, so it's just easier and obviously you're going to have so many contacts which is like a whole nother thing obviously when you go to business school you get whoever is in your class plus your network and people that get their mbas are typically people who do pretty well and are pretty ambitious and so obviously the network really really helps you down the line um Duh, right? Like I think anyone, even if you've never heard about an MBA, like you could probably think like contacts matter, you know, who you know matters. If you have, if you have the ability to reach out to anyone that, you know, works at a certain company that went to Haas, it's a much like tight knit, small community. People want to help each other. So you just have like a better chance in getting the introduction than you would like a cold email. So that helps. And I mean, I think undergrad is kind of like that. Business school is just like next level because it is just like a smaller, I mean, class sizes for your MBA could be like 200 people versus like my undergrad at UCLA. I don't even know how many people, like thousands. There's kind of this like different next level, like the trust goes up. So like, okay, yeah, you went, you got your MBA at Haas, so you're probably pretty smart. Let's do this type. Just helpful in general, no matter what you want to do. Um, I would also say, I'm talking about this generally, your, if you need to develop a skill set that you don't have to do what you want to do in the long term, whether that's like leadership, how to, you know, build and cultivate a team, like leaders coach, whatever the case might be, or you want to do like design thinking, um, and you don't have any of those skills, obviously school is going to help build that, <laughs> that skill set. I think a lot of times MBAs kind of forget that, you know, you learn like the case method, you learn how to think through things. You learn about like competitors and game theory and a lot of times we'll be like oh well yeah it wasn't like the school part wasn't that necessary it was like more about the networking but then if you think about if you hadn't learned all of those things you hadn't run read those hundreds of cases you probably wouldn't be as equipped to do whatever you're doing now so definitely is just like a higher level training so yeah that's obviously helpful if you are interested in entrepreneurship so that's what i'm in interested in doing um, Berkeley is ranked like number four in entrepreneurship, number six overall. Uh, if you didn't know, I'll put like ranking lists down below. And for entrepreneurship, I think it honestly kind of depends. For me, I didn't have a business undergrad, so I lacked a lot of like the finance skills and things like that, operational knowledge uh, to be able to really effectively run a company from the ground up. So I think if you want to start a company, get bought out, that's fine. But if you're an entrepreneur, 
it's very hard to be like a Mark Zuckerberg type where you're running your company from you know infancy all the way to like IPO or through IPO a lot of times entrepreneurs are changed out for somebody with an MPA so you might have a great idea you could get uh, I see this happen a lot. You could get funded, etc., but it comes to a certain point where they don't think that the entrepreneur really has the skill set to manage the company. So if you're thinking about long term as an entrepreneur, I think an MBA can help a lot. Maybe you have this great finance undergrad background or you're just like, you know, a very talented person, then maybe you could do it. But I would say that's kind of like the one percent versus the ninety-nine percent. So for me, I don't want to just like start a company. I want to run it for the long term, hopefully. So that's a huge reason why I wanted an MBA. Secondarily, you have a lot of on ramps for funding. So not only does Berkeley have so many competitions, I'm in the running for something called Launch, which is a like basically you have to have an alumni or somebody in the school to compete and compete for hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's kind of like an incubator where you work on the project or the business idea for three months and then you pitch in front of a bunch of venture capitalists and a panel of judges. So you secure funding not only through prizes, but also if somebody in, you know, from a VC likes your idea, you could be funded that way too. So you also have a much higher chance of getting accepted into different accelerators like Skydeck, like Combinator. It's obviously really helpful. There's also like Dean scholarships, um, the Hanso Lee Fellowship. They're like a lot, <laughs> basically. If you want, um, I mean, just type like Berkeley House Entrepreneurship and you'll see like tons of competitions and funding opportunities. So um, like in my entrepreneurship class, I developed a team, a business deck, like a pitch deck, financials, um, a sales and marketing plan, all within the class. Um, I won like an initial Darwin Day pitch, uh, and then you pitched in front of real VCs at the very end, and I got funding meetings off of that. People are just more willing to take a meeting with you if you're like, hey, I'm at Berkeley Haas, I have this idea, versus like, I'm Joe Schmo, will you listen to me? Uh, I think it just gets you in the door a little bit faster. Not only do you have, um, lots of funding opportunities through the university, but you can also just get the meetings a lot easier. Uh, so yeah, it kind of depends. Do you absolutely need an MBA to be an entrepreneur? No. Does it help? Absolutely. Um, you also have like the network. So I was able to find people from like Stanford, MIT, all that, who ha are now at Berkeley um, to help build out this idea. So you just have a really amazing like talent pool. Uh, your professors have a lot of contacts. Classmates are really helpful. I've had a lot of people like mock me because they're like venture fellows or um, I'm in the venture capital club. I was the VP of marketing this year. I'm not running next year, but uh, obviously because I'll be gone. But uh, yeah, that was really helpful. I got to go to like plug and play ventures and a bunch of different like venture capital firms. Um, Illuminate Ventures came. They're like of more women founded. They're into like diversified founding teams. So, oh yeah, I'm plug and play, like Google rented space from plug and play. Uh, PayPal is one of the things that they invested in, things like that, so it's a big deal. And I would never really be able to have those contacts without Berkeley or without doing the, being like a VP in that club. So yeah, I don't know, I think it's really helpful. That said, um, not all schools really are great in entrepreneurship, so if you want to do that, I would definitely look at the schools that are doing that the best um, <laughs> and try to go for that. If you want to do like an alternative investment vehicle, like a hedge fund top 10 MBA is pretty much a prerequisite. Um, if you want to like, you know, raise money and get people on board, people are going to ask where you go to school or where you went to get your MBA. So I would say that's probably yes. Same with private equity. Um, for tech, so a lot of people at Berkeley are in the part-time program are working at Google, you know, Facebook, YouTube, etc., Salesforce, um, or if in the full-time program looking to go into tech. And what I would say is that you, if you want to do like strategy or you're moving up in the ranks in a big tech company, having an MBA is really important. Um, basically, you can't manage 
a certain amount of people unless you have an MBA. I mean, maybe you could be a unicorn, but that's unlikely. So they really liked people, maybe you have like a PhD and you have like a computer science background, but you don't have much in the way of like business training. That's really gonna hurt you, especially when you're like 40, 35 to 40 trying to run a team you're not going to be selected for that next promotion to oversee this team unless you have an MBA in all likelihood and you'll be passed over for those people who do have them. So we see that all the time. And there's a lot of people who kind of like hit a ceiling in tech and then are getting their MBA so that they can circumvent that ceiling. <laughs> so it's not necessary in some ways to do that for tech. You could be like a great you know, developer code or whatever and get far along enough um, and obviously get the job without the MBA. But it, talking about like tw 10, 20 years from now, you may miss out on opportunities because of the MBA or because of the lack of the MBA. And lastly, I guess this is just sort of tangential to that. Um, I think a lot of your friends right now, they're getting promoted. They're like, why would you need an MBA? You don't need an MBA. And I think they're probably right till they're 35 ish when, you know, you really start trying to be like in the C-suite or a VP um, or trying to like manage large teams. That's when it starts to really matter if you have an MBA or not. So yeah, your friends while you're doing two years of school or you know, kind of continuing to move up the ranks and that might be a little frustrating, but in 10, 15 years from now, the opportunities that you have versus the opportunities that they have are completely different. And I see that all the time. You know, a lot of the really successful people I know have MBAs. So, I mean, not to say that there aren't some without those, but I think it's obviously really helpful. And if you don't want to be like passed over, you know, maybe you think you're smarter than the person with the MBA and you might be right, but they took the two years out to do it and they have the degree, so at the end of the day they are more qualified they're going to be paid more i think that's a huge thing to consider a lot of people are freaked out about paying you know let's say it's like 150k or whatever it might be um Haas's tuition is obviously expensive anything in the top 10 is like 50 to 6 to 70k per year which is a lot One of the first things that you do in your finance course is you basically do like uh an analysis on like what is the benefit to somebody in terms of like a lifetime earning how much is it worth it to do an MBA and basically it's yep it is worth it because essentially you miss out on let's say those two years of your salary and you're paying let's just say 100k um, but over the lifetime you're making like at least a million dollars more than somebody without an MBA and likely even more than that you use pretty conservative numbers so yeah I would say that it's worth it I mean a lot of the people coming out of Haas you can look at rankings I think they're making like 130,000 um, out of Stanford I think the highest is like 200,000 so I don't know I mean it's just a different ball game right <laughs> like what you're going to be able to command from a top 10 school as opposed to before is it's a huge jump and yes $100,000 is a lot of money, but if you think about it, if you're making like 200K or 150K plus bonus right out of school for the next, you know, well, obviously you get incremental pay increases and bonuses and things like that. But for like investment banking, for instance, if you go to any of like the bulge brackets, you're going to be making 150K plus whatever your bonus is. So let's say it's like 50K, that's 200K right out of the door, whereas you would not likely be commanding that before MBA. So obviously it depends. I mean, you might have this amazing job, but just think about it like in 10 years from now, do you want, <laughs> do you need it? Um, for me, I was an entrepreneur. I guess I'll just end on my personal note. Um, I was an entrepreneur, so I built a like division that didn't exist previously in my uh, firm. It was a digital division and I learned a lot. I learned that I was actually really good with people but I also learned things like I didn't know much about finance. I didn't know how to like structure a lot of like our retainers and things like that. Um, I didn't know how to do like a cost benefit analysis or anything similar, remotely similar to that. Uh, operationally, I had a lot to learn um, in terms of like org charts. So it just highlighted, since I got the opportunity to basically be like an executive in my early 20s, um, 
at an established firm, it makes you realize what you know and what you don't know. And so for me, I was like, okay, I, I know I wanna be an entrepreneur and before I do that, there's a lot that I wanna learn. I know where I'm, my, I know where I'm qualified, I know where I'm not qualified, and I wanna bolster those skill sets so that when I do it on my own, I'm in a really good spot. So that is my two cents. Obviously I'm a little biased because I am earning my MBA, but I would say that it's been the best investment of my life and I'm very, very pleased with my education. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed Vlogmas. Don't forget to give this video a big like if you liked it. And don't forget to share this with somebody who is thinking about getting an MBA. All right, bye.